Hello everyone. My name, I'm just laughing to myself because I've just been saying all sorts of ridiculous things to you on the camera, but I've started again. My name is Paula and this is the Stitched by Mrs D podcast, video, whatever, about, and it's about knitting and crochet today and that's it. Yeah, I've got um, an online shop where I sell teddy bears, project bags for knitters and crochets, baskets, all sorts of things. Well, it's not actually all sorts of things. It it is just those things I've those things I've just mentioned. Lillian's over there. She's my dog. If you've never watched before, and I expect if you've never watched this before, you will have switched it off by now. I've left my cup, my tea bag in the cup, so that's gone. Lillian, my dog, is over there. She's a Lassa Apso, and she's been guarding a custard cream for two days. She'll get off to go to the toilet, to go out for a walk, and to eat her, yeah, and to eat her normal food. But the rest of the time, she likes to spend, come on, um, guarding her custard cream. Doug has just entered the room. Are you going to come over? And Ian is in his bed. Doug is an elderly cat. And I have to say he is, he is starting to look his age now. Last summer, if you watched my vlog, Mrs. No, vlog. It was vlog Temper. I did September vlogs. I spent the whole of the time trying to stop him being kidnapped. And also being seriously hurt on the roads. Because he was scaling the massive wall at the back of my house and then spending all of his time fast asleep in the middle of the road and it caused quite a stir in the community but I don't think he's going to be able to get over the wall this year so we'll have to see but he, he is he just walked around the corner and he looked old but he is old everybody's getting old aren't they Ian apart from you Guinea pigs are four this year, Lillian's 12 this year, Doug, I think he's 16 this year, they're all getting on, and Pam, I think she's 10, but we don't really know, because we rescued her, I think she might be a bit older than we think she is, anyway, it's not about the animals, is it? Uh, I don't really know where to start, because I've got so much to show you, I wasn't going to do a video today, but I've got a job that I don't really want to do, so I'm putting it off. And I have got a lot to show you, and I think that if I don't show you now, it's going to get to the point where there's going to be too much, and I'm not really going to know. I've, it, I think it would put me off coming back to see you. Ah, come on, Doug. I don't know if he'll come over. Ian's just smiled at me. Ian's got a lovely smile. Here he comes. This is old Doug. He's a very old man. He used to have a dark chin and now he's got a white chin. But that's fine, isn't it, Doug? Right. So I've got lots of socks to show you. I've got a finished uh, Christmas cardigan that I made over Christmas to show you. I got to wear it on Christmas Eve. I got it finished in time. I've got a blanket to show you. I've got a pair of socks for James to show you. I've got my um, last skein of wool to show you that I got in my advent. I, I got a weekly advent, but I'll tell you about that in a minute. I've got the last one to knit up, but I'll show you that. And I've also got my advent bear to show you that I... I'll tell you about that at the end. I did do a video all about it, about clothes and getting him dressed and everything in order, but it's got lost. It's not got lost, but I can't do anything with it, which is a pain. But I'll tell you about that at the end. I'm just going to try this tea. What do you think of the colour? The transition from winter and Christmas, no, Christmas into more springy times has gone successfully. I've transitioned from mince pies to hot cross buns 
and as you can see I've had my first batch of tulip, um, daffodils but they're they're on the way out right come on Doug let's show everybody what we've been making over Christmas so I got a weekly advent for beehive yarns and I think I might get a weekly advent again this Christmas because I really really enjoyed it I didn't what I wanted to do was make a pair of socks every week and I could have done that but I had a Christmas cardigan to finish off that I wanted to get finished in time to wear it on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day and Boxing Day which I did but it certainly messed up my plans for the weekly socks but I've got two pairs done and I've got one pair that I think I might be able to finish tonight if not tonight definitely um, by Saturday and then I'm going to cast the next pair on and they're really lovely so the advent that I got this year was the Beehive Yarns Patisserie advent and there were there were a few choices there was a weekly one which is the one I went with for like 400 gram skeins and then there was a normal everyday one and I don't know whether there was a 10 gram and a 20 gram options option but there was all sorts of different bases for all of the different advents and I got the four ply one and I thought what she call it she call it she calls it her Audrey base and um, it's lovely really 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 lovely but I think next year I might get the DK one. If there's a DK sock version, I think I'd get that. Of course, that would give me time to get have four pairs of socks and other stuff going on in the background as well, wouldn't it? Oh, he's laid down. What a lovely dog. Actually, I don't think Lillian's been out for a week this morning, have you? She's now looking at me. She's been laying down with her... She's got quite a long beard at the moment because it's winter. And it's all separated in the middle and gone up like that. Anyway, so the first colour that I opened and the first pair of socks that I made, oh, they're very lovely, is this one. I'm really sorry, but I haven't kept the tickets with the names of all the different colourways, I'm afraid. But I do know that if you like any of them and you want them, uh, the lady from Beehive Yarns, she has got them all in her shop at the moment with the 24 day advent as well. And I think that you can just, if you like one of these colours I'm going to show you, I think you can just buy that as well. So this is the first pair of socks that I made. It's called, they are called, the Ivy Cottage Socks. I think, I've written that down. And now I'm questioning myself, but I'm sure that's what they're called. They're by Danny from Little Bobbins. Look, it's lovely. I've been saving this pattern for a little while because I wanted something like this to knit them out of and when I opened this I thought yes I know exactly what I'm gonna exactly the pattern that I'm gonna make so this is it look it's a lovely pattern really really lovely I love knitting these and I think that the colour goes really well with the pattern now if you look here the The pattern on the back goes right the way down the heel flap, which I think is really nice as well. Lovely. I'll definitely make another pair. So that was my first pair. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Oh, lovely. And then the second pair I made 
was a pattern that I thought I already had in my Ravelry library, but I didn't. So I bought it and oh this was such a lovely pattern to do it's the first time I've ever I've ever made them and I think that I'll be making oh I slouching let me sit up a bit more I think I might use this pattern again for my last skein because I love it so much and I love the way it looks and again not to blow my own trumpet but I do think I've matched the colour and the pattern again really well so this is the next one. So this was week number two. This lovely colour. And the pattern that I've used this time is the Moss Eccles Socks by Kay Jones from the Bakery Bears. And these are from Ravelry. I don't know why I thought I already had this pattern. I think I must have hit the favourite button because I know I've given them some attention somehow. Look, look at that lovely pattern. It reminds me of the socks I used to wear at school and my mum used to tell me off when I used to roll them down in assembly. Have you been rolling your socks down? No. I love this colour and I can taste it, can you? Can you imagine that raspberry sauce on everything? I don't know, I can't remember whether it is raspberry. The only one I can tell you about is this last one so they are really really pleased with these socks and I enjoyed the pattern as well I just admire them because I've had them folded up in front of me on my table that sits in front of me whilst I'm knitting at night time and I've been looking at them thinking cool I really like those socks and I really like that colour I've got to watch out though because Lizzie's now got the same size feet as me and she started nicking socks. Meg's feet are a bit smaller than mine but that does not stop her nicking socks because she wears Doc Martens and she says that hand knitted socks are the only things that she can wear with them. Meg is doing, I don't know if I've told you, she's doing a childcare course now at college that she started in September. She started doing, last year she did the art course and she did really enjoy it, but I don't know. I think it's hard to be taught art when you've got your own way of doing things, isn't it? So, I said you can still do art, you don't always have to be taught to do it. So she's she's doing childcare now and she started her placements this week in the nurseries. Oh, she absolutely loves it, which is brilliant. Yeah, she likes it. I thought she'd be quite good, good at it and enjoy it once she got going. She hasn't enjoyed the classroom work, but she's not that sort of person. She, do, she doesn't learn well in a classroom. I said, just wait until you go on your placement and you'll love it. And she has. So that's these. That's the next pair. Oh, they're just lovely, aren't they? Oh, yes. Look at those, everybody. Now, the third colour, I'm still knitting at the moment. So let's have a look. Look that. I've nearly finished. I've made one and I've, I think I'm about halfway down the next one. So this is the third colour. So as you can see, you can see what's going on here, can't you everybody? We're getting a little bit darker now. We're going into the blackberry colours, aren't we? I'd say that is like a mild strawberry. That's a raspberry. Now we're getting into the blackberry. Yeah. I'd say that's right. So this is the, the, the next colour. It's lovely. It's got speckles of brown and I'm going to go with blackberry again. Do you say blackberry or blackberry? I say blackberry, but I think that's because I'm from Norfolk. So this time the socks that I'm making is a pair that I've made before. And they're called the Daisy Socks. And this is a pattern by Debbie Ford. 
and I already had this one in my Ravelry library. But whilst I was there looking, I looked at the other sock patterns because there were some beautiful ones in this lady's shop. And when the day I looked, I haven't been, look at my fringe, look, I've cut a chunk out the middle. The day I looked, um, all the patterns in this lady's shop were free. So it's Debbie Ford and these are the daisy socks. They're lovely. I love this pattern here. This scalloped business. So I've made one. Very lovely. I don't know if that's the toe that goes with it, but this is the umbrella toe by Kay Jones. I had it in my head from when I did these ones and um, I couldn't be bothered to open my phone to follow the pattern to do the suggested toe in this pattern. So that's fine, isn't it? But this, I think everything else is how it's written in the pattern. They're really lovely. Let's put my hand in it. I think I might have already done this actually, but I'll have another look because you can see properly, can't you, when it's all... So that's the bit you look at, isn't it? When you look down on your socks, look down at your feet when you've got them on, that's the bit that you look at. So they're really nice, aren't they? Oh, I just love it. I love socks and I love wool. I just love it all. Right, so let's continue our nice pile. So this is where I'm up to. To be careful, because I pulled a needle out of this before and they've all, all the stitches come off. Yes, yeah, so I've finished the leg for this bit. So I've now got the treat of doing the heel, which is my absolute favourite bit of knitting socks. I love doing the, um, the gusset and I just love picking up all the stitches and then doing all the decreases it's my favorite bit of sock knitting and i knit my socks on dpn's and my favorite dpn's are higher higher steel S steels yeah not sharps steels i like sharps for um shawl knitting but I've, i do find that they're a bit too sharp for sock knitting for me lovely so that's that one and then this is the last colour i'm going to let you read it everybody but i think it's translate as translates as lavender and myrtle tart i don't know i'm not a french speaker i hope you can see it and look, this is the colour. Isn't it beautiful? So this is lavender. I was going to say black currant, but it is lavender, isn't it? You all right, Doug? Am I squashing you under the table? Oh, no. Um, it is lavender, isn't it? So I think I might make another pair of these out of that. I think that would look lovely. Ooh, he might be off. We'll see, or we might just be moving about. Are you uncomfortable? So that's all the colours combined. Like I said before, you can get all these at the moment in the Beehive Yarns shop. But it's just lovely, isn't it? Really lovely. I won't wear them until I've finished this last pair so that I can show you the, the pile. Yeah, I'm really pleased with them. I love all the colours and I'll definitely get a weekly um, advent again next week. <laughs> next week, I'd love one next week. This Christmas. Of course, um, I do like the everyday ones, but I do feel... And this, it is just me saying this, that when I do have a weekly one, I do like a daily one. I do like to do them every single day and get that particular colour put in every day on whatever I'm making. 
because I do find that little bits can sometimes get um, not lost but sometimes forgotten about but if you I've had a body shop advent calendar this year and I loved it with all little bottles but I put them straight in the shower because I think sometimes when you have miniature versions of things you can I don't know keep them for ages and not use them I know I do anyway so yeah I think this is the way for me right shall we see what else I'm making it's another pair of socks now this is in a muddle it's a pair of socks that I'm making for James looks like I've spilt something on my bag oh I know what that's from so I'm making James a pair of socks and I forgot about these until the other day actually have I got the thing in here yeah Ooh, and a drop of perfume and a lovely needle Ooh, that's a lovely needle dog Why did, how did that get in there oh I'm lucky I didn't hurt myself with that because I've been carrying this bag about with me in my bag that's why I forgot about it so it's ha he <laughs> Ooh. Cascade Yarns Heritage Prints 95% superwash merino wool and 25% nylon. <laughs> just stop, stop watching. It's rubbish. Nothing else is going to happen with good, so just stop now. There you go. And the colour that I'm using is 69. Let's have a look at it, shall we? So, here we are. I'm really, I really, even though I did forgot I was making these, I didn't realise until I cleaned my bag out the other day. I am, I do love this wool. It's really nice. It's very soft and it feels very nice to knit with. Now, as I'm making these ones for James, I use these longer, higher, higher steels and I use a 2.75 millimetre for him. I don't count how many stitches I do or how many rows I do or anything like that. I just will get him to try it on when I think I've reached the right point. And then if I haven't, I'll do a bit more and then I'll do the toe. So that's for him. I'm going to put the knitting needle. Now I've got in a muddle with this. So I accidentally pulled from the centre, which is something I don't normally do. And it's turned into this, which looks like a very, very autumn-y ice cream. So I'm a bit worried about that, but I think it'll be all right. I might actually turn it into a ball, because I do like to do that, as you know. I have got a ball winder, but I, I hand wind all my balls, because I, oh, I just love it. I enjoy that as much as... The knitting i think i just like wool i think that's what my thing is you know people say are you a product or a process knitter i think i just like wool there we are so that's a bit of a muddle but i'll sort that out so he'll be pleased that i've remembered these these are good things to knit whilst i read my book oh dog you're half on half off that can't be comfortable come on Oh, I just love having a cat on my lap. So there for him. I can't really say much more about those. Um, I'm just trying to think what else I might have to tell you before we go on to the next thing. You can see I've put everything back, can't you? The, bun the spring bunny is back. I covered him up for Christmas with a picture of a Christmas bunny. And it was nice to have him back. Oh... I've got these from the local auction and there is another one today and I have got my eye on something. It's a lovely cupboard. But I think where would I put it? I couldn't put it in here. 
because it wouldn't match at Christmas time because it's yellow. But I could put it in the kitchen. But I don't know if I've got the heart to tell James that I bought something else from the auction. Not that he minds what I buy. He's not that sort of husband. But he just he doesn't like picking it up for me. Uh, what else was I going to tell you? Have I got anything else to tell you? Mm, not really, because I don't think it's been that long, has it, since I've seen you. Ian is continuing to play his bell really nicely. He looks so lovely in his bed. What about you? And you think I've already updated everybody about you, just that you're getting a bit old, aren't you? But he's still um, a lovely boy, aren't you? But he's just very, very old. Some people will say, that's not old for a cat. But it is really, isn't it? I know some cats live to be like super duper old, but... Right, next... Let's show you my lovely Pixie Yarns blanket. Oh, this is beautiful. It is very, very beautiful. And um, somehow I've completely fluked it to be the right size, completely the right size. And I don't know how I've done it, but I have. So this blanket is made up of some lovely wool. Um, Sophie from... Pixie Yarns, I, I say this and I'm, I think I'm right, I think she dyed up this club, it's a quarterly club with a Christmas pack as well, um, instead of an advent calendar this year and it's just been lovely, I've, I've enjoyed it so much, I haven't finished it yet, I know I'm talking like it's finished but it's not, right, so it started off and I'll tell you what the blanket is called, it's called the Cozy Stripe Blanket and it's by Attic24 and I'm making mine with I think a 3mm hook I don't I don't keep it in here in my bag I keep it in a, I've got a little pot that I keep all my crochet hooks in but I know which one it is I'm, I'm sure it's a th I'm making it with a 3mm hook I don't know how many stitches I started with or anything like that I'm afraid so I can't give you any help at all if you'd like to recreate it apart from telling you what the wool is so the first one first pack so there's five colors per pack and I think again I think you can get these still these packs so one two three four five so the first one goes up to this line here so that was the spring one. Beautiful, isn't it? I just love it. And then it goes one, two, three, four. No, I'm counting the wrong thing, aren't I? One, two, three, four, five. So then it goes up to there, that pink one at the top. One, two. Yeah, so it goes from the purple up to this lovely sort of orangey red. I love that red there, that one there, pinky red, up to the orangey red. And then we go into autumn, so it's one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to get on your nerves. So then that goes up to there. And then I got a Christmas pack, which is called Winter Solstice. Now, I was very, very surprised that Sophie actually sent me these last two packs over Christmas as a present. <gasps> I couldn't believe it! Because I was actually waiting until I had a bit of um, Christmas money to buy the last two. So, um, I've got them now. So, this is the last, this is the second from last pack. This is the one I'm using now. Winter Solstice, and I've got that one, yes it goes that way, but you'll see, so this stripe here, see this lovely red stripe, I did that on Christmas Day, and that is a Christmas red isn't it, so it's going back up now to these lovely browns, 
Or would you call it a maroon? Is maroon ready brown? And then it's going to go into this one, which is more of a purpley aubergine, I'd call that. I've got it in my head, I don't like aubergine and I've never tried it. And I'm the same with avocado. And then that one there. So that's more of a bluey purple, isn't it? So that's lovely. And I really, really, really love doing this blanket. Um, and when I look at it, I sort of remember what I was doing. So I get obsessed with stuff. If there's a, a craze, I will get involved, like sporting crazes. I got really into the ladies' football in the summer. Um, what else have I got into? Well, anyway, after Christmas, I got into the darts. And these ones here... I did when I was watching the darts. <laughs> I've got into the darts before, but that's another story for another day. So that's the winter solstice colours. And then there's this one, and I think this is my favourite pack so far. And this is Yule 2003. And look, I'm going to take it out because you can't see it because it's glistening. Sorry about the rustling, I'm supposed to say that, aren't I? Look. So, I think the colour's best if I show it here for some reason. That's, that's just right. So, it goes from this one and then up to there. So, it's the same thing, isn't it? Sort of repeating back on itself, but with more wintry shades rather than spring springy do you see what i mean oh i love this one this is my favorite pack i just love those colors oh it makes me not want to do my dreadful job i've got to do this afternoon and just do this i want to put them back in the right order i'll lay them down there ian do not touch those I'm lucky, none of my cats are wool orientated, shall we say. They d just don't bother about it. Sometimes if I have a little ball like that, if I pull too hard on it, it goes flying across the room. Ian will chase it, but they just don't mind. They're not bothered by it. Um, the dogs have never been interested in anything thing really they don't like toys and they've never chewed anything i think dennis went through a phase of i shouldn't say his name um a phase of hairbrushes at one point he just loved handles of hairbrushes he would have been 10 yesterday he was my um other dog and he died in february last year at the end of february horrible Poor Lillian, that was her brother. It took her a long time to um, sort of start acting normal again. She's still not quite right. But she's very spoilt. I was thinking about getting a puppy in the spring. But I'm not going to do that. Um, we went on a walk and a puppy on a lead come up to us. And I ended up with both her and the puppy wrapped around my legs with their leads. And she just didn't, she wasn't interested in it at all. I'll tell you what I wouldn't mind. I'd like another old lady with similar interests to come and live with us. But I've applied for rescue animals loads of times in the past. I got Pam and I got Kim before um, Kim was my cat. Oh, why am I talking about all these dreadful deaths? I got them from um, rescues, but that was an independent rescue. It was a lady who had one in her house. And um, every 
other time I've applied they've, they've turned me down so I don't know if I'd ever get an old lady I don't know I've got to sort this fringe out it does look like I've just gone like that it's probably because that's that is what I did so I don't know I'm here all the time as well so I don't I think it's in my head that I think she needs a companion I don't think she does I think she's I think she's all right I think I just want another pet don't I I'm not going to get one so that's my lovely blanket I don't know if I could bear to disturb dog let me try and um Be careful on this chair, it's dodgy. I can see you through the holes. Can you see me? There we are. So this is just going to be the perfect size and it's all accidental. It's not my doing. I didn't do any like special calculations or anything. It's just a complete and utter fluke. It's lovely. I can't wait to. I have actually got it folded up and out at the minute, but it'll be nice to get it into full use. But it is at that lovely length now so that it can keep me warm whilst I crochet on it. It's bin day. It's all a muddle around here. No one knows what's going on. James had to go on the internet and find out what bin day it was. They're now coming. And we've got a giant sinkhole outside our house. Do you remember, over, if you watched my vlogmas, James reported a, a hole outside our house, outside the driveway of our house. And they came and sorted it out really, really quickly. Well, it's all fallen in and it's worse than ever now. And all they've done is put a gate around it. So... This bit had to be, um, they'll have to come sort it out because it actually does go right down to the core of the earth. James shone a, um, a torch down it and you could see fire. I am joking. Sometimes people take me too literally. I, that is a joke. We can't really see down at the core of the earth, but it is pretty deep. Mm. I haven't told you what cardigan I've got on. I made this a long, long time ago, and it's lovely. It's called the Like a Cloud Cardigan by Hohe Locatelli. And it's made out of one strand, is that what we say? One strand of lace and one strand of mohair. Yes, I think I used um, drops, drops lace and drops kid silk is that what it's called whatever they're like for you know whatever their thin stuff is called i use that and it's really lovely i'd love another one but i don't think i want to make another one i really love it and it's just so nice to wear it's nice and long it's lovely but it was a bit boring to knit. But is it worth it? Yeah, I might make another one. Right, I'm going to show you another cardigan now. So this is the Christmas cardigan that I've been running on about for the whole time. Oh, Doug's making my nose itch now. Ian's got magnificent feet there. Um, he's got white socks on. But his actual pads of his feet are a brown dark brown and they're beautiful right so this is my finished cardigan it's the ooh, pine forest cardigan and it's by the pattern is by martin story and it's supposed to be made out of uh rowan felted tweed but I've made it out of Stylecraft Highland Heathers. And the red colour that I've used here is called Tayberry. Or Tabery. Tabery. And this sort of creamy colour is called Brose. 
I don't know how if that's how you say it, but someone told me that it means porridge. And it is the colour of porridge because it has got a few flecks in it. So I can't remember. I think I made the size three. And um, it's lovely and long. Now, I did make a few adjustments. Now, this pattern is supposed to... So, these snowflakes are supposed to repeat up here. But I could see I had such a small gap left. I didn't want to have half a snowflake. I just thought it would look cleaner if I just left it. Um, what else did I do differently? Oh, I haven't, still haven't blocked it. Um, oh, it's the bins. Can you hear them? I might pause it. Can you hear them? I don't know whether you could, if, the, if this is loud for you as it is for me. I've just put something in my hand that I've got to tell you about before we go on about this. So, this blanket the white bit or the cream bit is drops baby merino and the color is zero two and i think it's like ivory rather because they do do a white one but this is the next one up because i always forget to tell people about that right so this cardigan let's see what else did i this pattern here was supposed to continue across there like it has there and um, I didn't want half a tree because I thought that would make the picking up of this bit here a bit messy as well. So I didn't do that. The pattern itself is um, not hand holder. It's very much decrease this do this but it doesn't say what sort of decrease to do and what sort of increase to do and I'm fine with that it doesn't say what style you should cast on what style you should cast off anything like that um, and again I'm all right with that because that's how I grew up I was going to say I grew up knitted with patterns like that that just say well do this do that and that's it that's all you're getting Work it out yourself. Um, whereas I think independent patterns are a lot more um, a lot more user friendly. Also, I printed it out, and the writing was ridiculously small. And the pattern itself, like the chart for the colour work, was ridiculously small as well. Um, So if that would be a problem, you'd either have to get a magnifying glass or print it again, but in bigger, you know, plus whatever it is you do when you print something out to make it bigger. Another thing, which might be a pain, and it was a bit of a pain until I got going with it, um, the, the back of it is between two pages. And of course the printing is so tiny it was hard to match them up and that's fine once you get going along because once you've got this bottom row all sorted out and you know where everything's going and you know how many stitches that's not a problem anymore because once you've got this bit established that's fine but to start with a bit of a pain when you're having to go between pages when you've got your chart it's like a massive chart like that but that's okay as well once you get established so the pattern goes from this sort of christmas tree to snowflakes to this sort of christmas tree to more snowflakes to this one and if you look here look i did i thought i knew what i was doing here this is the second side that i made this is the first one and i did my own thing look so that's different but as James said to me over vlogmas all Christmas trees are de decorated differently so my ones are different as well and I'm not the sort of person to bother about things like that 
So it's the same on the back. All the back is patterned as well. I don't really want a disturbed dog again. You can see it needs blocking, but that's fine. So I'm not going to be wearing it again until next year. So this year. So that's the chair, by the way. So, um, come on. Do you want to go? I don't know if he wants to stay or go. It's, um, I don't know what I'll say now. But I found this wool lovely to do the colour work with. And I think it looks all right, doesn't it? I think the stitch defini definition is good. It was lovely. And it's 100% acrylic, I think. But I haven't had any problems with it. I think it's just lovely. I like this colour. Somebody said that it looks like an iced gingerbread house. And I think it does. I think I'm going to make another Christmas jumper. And... You know my bunny cardigan, I've got two now, I've got a pink one and a blue one, which is the blue one's got black bunnies on and the pink one's got white bunnies on. I might make a red one or a green one and make white bunnies on it so it looks Christmassy. Did I tell you that the, the sleeves on this are supposed to be, um, are supposed to have the pattern on as well? I, I left that out. I just thought it'd be too much. And that's what I did with my bunny cardigan as well. This wool, I really like it. I've used it before. That looks like it's got a pluck in it, but it isn't. That's a, um, it's got all sorts of different colours in it. So there's bits of gold, darker reds. That is a piece of blue that you can see there. I might, let me see if I can get that out actually. Yeah, I've pulled it out. That's better. That was annoying me. Yeah, there's all sorts of colours. Look, there's a piece of... Can you see that piece of gold there? So it does look flecky, just like the felted tweed does. But I'm, I'm really pleased with it, and it's just right for putting over stuff. I haven't done buttonholes on it. Um... But I did see a video the other day for afterthought buttonholes. And I might give that a go if I decide I want the buttons. But I'm not too worried about it. I'm going to stand up with Doug. And show you. It is nice, isn't it? I really like it. Look at Doug's old legs hanging down. He's such a nice cat. He just lets me fuss him about the whole time. So there we are. I, I can't think of anything else I might have to tell you about it. Told you that everything is really tiny. I don't know. I might have forgotten something, but I really, really enjoyed making it. Oh, Just Eat keeps telling me how cheap their pizzas are. And I want to know. I do want to know, but I'm not going to order any. Hmm. Um, but what I'm going to do this year is I'm planning my Christmas knitting so I start it a bit earlier. So I've got this box here. Meg got this for my mum for Christmas and she's going to, she had it to chuck in the bin. I said, you can't chuck a nice box like that away. So this is going to be my um, September box. I'm going to open this in September and I'm going to start knitting all my Christmas stuff in September, including this bunny cardigan that I've just spoke to you about. So let's show you what I've got in the September box. Ooh. Oh, Doug. He just tried to itch his head, his, <laughs> his chin. He nearly fell off. I have squashed him in. So I've got in it, let's show you, because I want to get it all out again. So I've got this. I was going to make these for James and I never got round to it. These are some nice, it's more of that lovely Hescade. <laughs> Why do I keep saying Hescade? Cascade Heritage prints. And um, in a Christmassy colour. I've got this one, this is Lay Family Yarn and it's called Spiced Apple. That could be an autumn one as well, couldn't it? 
but I, I, I always think of the smell of spiced apple as being quite Christmassy. I've got this one, this is from Pixie Yarns, and this was a Christmas one from not this Christmas that's just gone, but the one before, and I never got round to using it. And it's called Late to the Party, and again, it's a DK and it's sparkly. And then I've got this one, which was spent... I don't know why, I know why I said that, it's because I just saw the word sparkle. This was sent to me by Suzanne from Green Lambkin Yarn for my birthday present and I'm going to use this in September as well. Sparkle sock and it's called Jolly Holly. Isn't that lovely? Can't wait to see how that all nips up. So that is something to look forward to. So it's my September box because... I start feeling festive when the kids go back to school. So September, although this September it was boiling hot, this last one that's just gone. So that is for me to open in September. I might even wrap it up. I, I did have some Christmas paper, I must have put, put it back. September, Ian. I bet you're going to be a sod this year, aren't you? Over Chris, over the summer. He was get, starting to be a bit naughty by the time the summer ended. James caught him out poking his head out the front, taking the route that Doug normally takes to get out the front. He must have copied him. So let's think about what I'm going to do next. I'm going to finish this lovely blanket, I'm going to finish those socks and then I'm going to have quite a bit of this left over so I might make something with what's left over. I'm thinking about a nice little stripy blanket for Lillian or something like that. I think she'd like that because she loves purple and it really suits her. She's got a winter collar on at the moment and she looks very sweet in that. I've got a cut... Oh stained the tablecloth with this tea bag oh it's going to make me cross it's really hard to get those things out but I'll do it don't worry um, I'm going to finish all those socks finish those socks for James and I've got a cardigan that I need to finish you will have seen it before if you've watched me before it's beautiful it's called the bookish cardigan and it's navy blue it's all cables all I've got to do is half of the back and two sleeves and it's done the problem is it's navy blue and it's really hard for me to do in the evenings. I did try a neck lamp, but I didn't really like it. Um, so it needs to that needs to be a daytime thing really, but I don't really because I've I'm at my sewing machine quite a lot. I don't really get the chance from now on for much daytime knitting, so I'll think about that, but I must get that finished. Uh, and then I've got James's sock blanket. Maybe I should do one of those videos that people make about all of my things I've got on the go. But I've just told you about them, so I don't. I probably don't need to do that, do I? I think that's it for the knitting stuff, but I'm going to talk about my shop now. I'm going to actually show you my advent teddy because I started showing him over Vlogmas and then I got worried. Meg's just text, can I invite the tea on Monday? Oh, yes, that's fine. Um, I got worried that some people might not be opening theirs at the same rate that I was opening them, so I stopped. But anyway. I made a prototype bear. I'm sure everybody's opened theirs by now, but if you haven't, don't watch this bit. Although mine is a bit different to yours anyway. So I made a prototype bear. And um, he is a bit different to the ones that people got, because I'll show him to you. I actually ended up making mine with bigger eyes than this one. But I've kept him. And as I was going along, I made one each of everything else for my bear. So his name's Teddy. I have got a video all about one of the other bears, the ones that people actually got. But over Christmas, I got 
so I had very little memory left in my phone so I did a clean up on my phone like an automatic thing and I haven't lost the video but it's now in a format that I can't access the only way I can send it to people is through a Google link I've tried sending it to James, I've tried putting it in an email, I've tried WhatsApping it, I just can't send it, I can't do anything with it. But I did a video just as I was packaging everything up with everything, like getting dressed and telling stupid stories and stuff like that. But I can't do anything with it, so I'm just going to have to show you him now. But that's fine, it was one of your brothers. So mine's called Teddy, and he dressed because he's going Christmas shopping that was the theme this year now he's got white underpants underneath here I don't need to prove it he's just said it's cross. and then he's got cords can you see and then he's got this lovely hand knitted jumper with a Christmas tree on the front of it and then a hand knitted scarf which was a present from his grandma or was it his auntie? I can't remember what I put on the piece of paper now. That was his present last year. And look, she doesn't sew her ends in. She just snips them. But it's lovely and warm. And then he got a basket. And in the basket, this was another parcel. There were some presents. They're all wrapped up by me. So that goes on that arm like that. And then he got, and I can't find his one, but he actually got a tote bag to put on the other arm as well. And then in the tote bag, he got all his Christmas wrapping paper, but we'll have to put that under his arm. And then he hadn't bought his Christmas tree, so he had to buy a Christmas tree as well. And that balances nicely under that arm. So that was the finished one. Oh, I didn't show his little, little um, boots. They were all hand sewn. I sort of want them to look like pixie shoes. So that was it. But I did, I put a picture on Instagram, but the video, I don't know what I can do. But we've got you, we can show everybody with you. So I've got Teddy now and he will be able to come out every, actually you're not going to go away, are you? No. He's made friends with Jasper which was probably not the best idea for him to get in with him, but they get on well. And um, he's been spending quite a time, a lot of time with him. See, he's off. He's off with Jasper. He don't want to talk to us. So, aren't I stupid? I don't care, though. I like being a bit daft. Um, in my shop at the moment, I've got, I, I haven't got very many left. But I'm actually doing an Easter version of an, um, I've called it a, no it's not, I've called it a spring countdown rather than Easter. Because it's, I'd say it's going to be springy more than Eastery. So it's a spring countdown bunny. So it's going to be this sort of thing, again, but a bunny, um, to get dressed. So you will end up with. A very very springy beautiful bunny with all the clothes and stuff that you might need for a, a spring day and I haven't got very many many left but they're in my shop at the moment if anyone's interested in one of those you get a bear oh and I didn't show you the the project bag did I he's cross I've got him back again come on get over to Jasper then we're going to have a game of cards. Um, you get a bunny and a project bag and then 10 packages to open to get the bunny dressed. And if anyone's interested in one of those, I'll put the link in the description box. Other shop stuff. I've got some more animal bags on the go. They will be in my shop at the end of January, but I'll put a, a community post on here and then I'll put one in the on Instagram as well. And then I'm going to be posting out my teddy bear club next week. I've had to stop today because my hands are so sore from the 
for sewing. I said to James, I don't think I'm going to be able to make any teddy bears tomorrow because they're, they're so tiny. It really takes its toll. And I'm not talking about my joints or anything like that. I'm talking about the actual skin. I don't know if you can see, but I've got holes in all of my... And I've tried thimbles. I can't get on with them. So, I don't know, but... They'll be fine. I'll be able to, to do them tomorrow, but I just needed a day off today with some hand cream. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to be doing those and then I'm going to be spending a lot of time getting ready for the East Anglian Yarn Festival, which is, I think, the first weekend in March. Or is it the second weekend? It's the Mother's Day weekend in March. Um, as that's at the Norfolk showground and the tickets are available now maybe I'll put the link to that in in the description box as well I'm going to be there with my stall I am going to isolate from now on because last year I caught Covid and I didn't end up going I just didn't think it was fair to expose people to the germs so I kept myself at home and I did an online shop update in, instead which people were really kind about but I want to go this year desperately want to go I've got all the stuff I've bought a rail this is going to come with me my dress is coming with me um I've got a card machine that's never been out of the box so I'm going to be I'm going to be able to use all my stuff so I'm looking forward to that so maybe I'll meet some of you there I did a big shop for some fabric for there the other day. I'm going to be taking some bear bags with me, baskets, and there'll be a teddy bear club as well. So, if you're in the area, come and say hello. James is coming with me. He's going to be wearing an... He said to me the other day, I think you probably should get me an apron, you know. So we'll have to get him an apron. Uh, I think that's it, everybody. Oh, I need to go and sort this fringe out. I need to go to the hairdresser actually because my hair's getting a bit long now. I want my short bob cut in, cut back. I think that's it. So I'm going to love you and leave you. And I think I'm going to, before I start my next job, I think I might sit with you, Doug, for a little bit longer. Not on this chair though because it's very uncomfortable. He's just such a nice cat. I was saying to James the other day, he's just been kind to everybody, as has Lillian. Lillian is such a kind dog. They've, she gets so excited about anybody new, like the kittens that we've had. Now, who have, I've only had one kitten, haven't I, Ian? But the guinea pigs, the rabbit, uh, Pam, she's just been lovely to everybody. And so has Doug. I'm a bit worried about getting someone new because Ian, um, I'm not, I'm not planning on getting anyone new by the way, but Ian, um, doesn't like the ginger cat who lives outside George. He's like really horrible to him through the window, but you just have to be sensible, don't you? When you introduce new animals and I've done it lots of times before. Not that I'm planning anything by the way, I'm really not. But we'll have to see. No, we won't have to see. I'm not planning anything. Right, Doug. I bet you're ready for some food, aren't you? I think I might be as well. I bought a soup maker and I'm, obs I'm obsessed with it. If you've got any vegetables and you like soup, get a soup maker. I can't stop talking about it to my friends. That's all I ever want to talk about. In fact, I think I've got my Monday run day fun day on Monday. So I'm going to make soup for, for my friends when they come round. Right, anyway, I need to go. I expect you need to be getting on with stuff as well. Oh, maybe you don't. That'd be lovely. I've got to get on though. So I'm going to say goodbye and I'll come and see you soon. I've got, I'll have some more socks I should think. And who knows what I might start or finish in the meantime.
But I'll tell you what it won't be. It won't be that blue cardigan. Will it, Doug? Right. Oh. What a disaster. Right, I'll see you all quite soon. I'm going to put my other cardigan back on. Come on, Doug. You go down now. I'll be back soon. See ya. Bye.